Hi everybody, welcome to the Chalk Pastel in Perspective video. You are going to need your sketchbook and a pencil for this project. Please go ahead and get that now. Okay, so go ahead and turn your paper like this. And what I want you to do is to please, please divide it into three parts. And there are three techniques to show perspective in art. There's more than three, but we're just going to focus on three today. Size, placement, and overlapping. All right, please go ahead and write those three words on your paper. Okay, so we are going to start with size. Obviously, if something is closer in front of you, it is going to appear bigger, and if something is farther away, it's going to look smaller. I'm gonna use circles just to make it easy. So if something is super up close, it may even be, you may not even be able to see the whole thing, so it's cut off like this, okay? Super up close and big. Something is kind of like in the medium distance, looking medium sized and something that's far away is going to be teeny tiny in the distance. Go ahead and give it a shot on your paper. The next thing we have um, when we create a piece of art and we want to show a little bit of distance is placement. So the bigger objects, the things that are closer to you are going to be in the front and the things that are farther away are going to be smaller and more at the top of your paper. So let's give that a shot. So the big stuff at the bottom, medium stuff in the middle and at the top of this rectangle here some small items to make it look like it's far away give it a shot and the last trick we are going to learn about is a little bit of overlapping boys and girls notice my hand is overlapping the paper pencil is overlapping my hand there is a lot of overlapping in real life, in the three-dimensional world. So we are going to try to um, replicate that on our papers and do some overlapping. So here we go, I've got the big circles down here, some medium ones a little bit overlapping, covering each other up. So this is not transparent, so it's blocking the one in the back. just looks a little bit more realistic when we overlap. Try a little bit of overlapping, please. Okay, so what we're going to do now is you are going to need a black piece of paper for the next part and a white pencil. Go ahead and get what you need. Okay, so before we start drawing, I just want to show you some other ideas of things that you might want to do on yours. We've got oranges, people have done strawberries, um, some kids have done Day of the Dead, kind of like sugar skull type thing. Some kids have done fruit and a solar system combination, and still other kids have done cupcakes. So it is up to you what you want to right, make. Once you have your supplies, project. I just want you to have this sitting in front of you so that you can remember what we were working on before. Um, now, I am going to do this in circles. As you can see in the back, you can do it in hearts. Some people have done it in lots of different shapes. It's totally up to you. Um, so here we go, let's go for it. So the first thing that you want to remember on your black paper is that the big stuff goes on the bottom, so size. Here we go, big stuff on the bottom and it's coming off of the page. I'm gonna make my super duper mega heart over here coming off of the page. Then in the middle, have some other hearts here, a little bit of overlapping, maybe make them go in different directions. That's fine too. 
And then further up on the paper, pretty small, we're going to have the small stuff. Go for it, it is your turn. Okay, once you have some objects, whatever objects you chose, and we've got size overlapping and placement on the page, and once you were able to demonstrate that you understood all that, now we are going to move on to the fun bit, which is the coloring. Go ahead and get your right, ladies and gentlemen, when you are coloring with chalk pastels, it's a good idea to figure out what color you want to be the base color first. So for example, if I were going to do some red here, I'm just going to color it. Now I'm not pressing super duper hard because you really want to avoid dust as much as possible with chalk pastels because it's not great to breathe at all. So you notice I'm making a little bit of dust, but it's definitely not a sandstorm in there. So I've colored it a lot, and then I'm going to do the rest of some rubbing with my finger. And you don't want to rub it so much that it turns black. There we go. Okay, you can choose another color or another heart. Here we go. Now, it's really important, guys, that if you do get some powder, some dust, that you do not blow it. This stuff is not great to breathe. So what I want you to do, if you get a little powder, is you're gonna go ahead, pick up your paper, walk to the nearest garbage can, give it a little bit of a tap so it doesn't go everywhere, get rid of that dust, and then bring it back. Please, please, please do not blow it at the people sitting at your table. They will not be happy with you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Please go ahead and start coloring in the first layer of chalk on your objects. Hey, welcome back. So you've got your first layer done and now is the time to add some of the shading. So what is a good idea is to have a look at a color wheel and see what kind of a darker color that is near the color of whatever your object is. So for example, check it out. This is like a red orange, right? So this heart is like a red orange down here. So what is a little bit darker than that? Maybe I can use purple for that. I can even use blue as a, a shadow for that. So imagine the light is coming here, hitting over here. So the shadow is on the other side. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and I'm following the contour line of the heart. And then I'm gonna very carefully, again, following that contour line, give it a little rub, and it makes it look like there's a little bit of a shadow. So I've got a light green one here. Um, I'm gonna try to do a little blue for that. I can do a light blue, that's fine. Here we go, right down there. Hmm, maybe dark blue would be better. There we go. Okay, now I'm not going like this, going wild and crazy all over the place. I'm actually very, very purposefully and carefully rubbing that. Okay, now it is your turn. I can't wait to see what kind of shadows you add to your objects. Hey, welcome back everybody. I hope you are happy with the shadows that you added. Now is the time for the highlights. Remember the sun or the light source is coming this way. So I am going to add some highlights as if that light source is hitting my object. I like to use white um, on mine. I also use some yellow sometimes. So look at that, I'm following the contour line of that heart. And then you wanna check your hands because you don't wanna make it dirty again. You might even wanna wash your hands. And very gently rub it in. You don't want to rub it so much that the white disappears. Here we go. Follow the contours. Follow that outline shape. Looking good. Okay, your turn. I can't wait to see what kind of highlights you add to yours. Okay, so I've already started the background a little bit. Some kids that like to do some stars in the background. I was playing around with making it look like the, um, my hearts were glowing, taking a little um, 
pasta, making a line and then rubbing it like that. Um, now I'm gonna mess around a little bit with using the side of my pasta, rubbing it like this, but again, we have to do it really carefully. And then maybe what would happen if I added some white to that? That's kind of cool, huh? All right, I'm gonna keep going here and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so I'm just having some fun playing around with the background here. Or what might happen if I add a little bit of pink to here? Might look kind of cool. All right, so. Again, this is your piece of artwork, so I want to see what fantastic ideas you come up with. Go for it.